Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Fact Sheets live on ETV, live on Nissan 95.9 and 100.1 in Bogotanga and Tamale, respectively also live on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram with the handle ETV Ghana. You can join the conversation and share your thoughts, your views and your comments with us even as we discuss the issues. You know that on this platform, it's only about the facts and nothing but the facts. Tonight we're talking politics and we're talking the economy as well and we're talking governance in the country because we happen to find ourselves in the home of an astute politician, a seasoned one for that matter, with the NDC fraternity who has served his constituency, the Amenfi East constituency before and also served Ghana as a former local government minister in this country. We're talking about his views on how the Ghanaian economy is doing issues to do with the IMF and the position they hold, that Ghana should bear it all and tell the world as to how we are going to sustain our debts that we owe and then how we are going to finance them. The issue to do with President Kufado and his governance, year one, and in the second term that the people of Ghana has, uh, have given him. We talk about the NDC's position on several matters, the Electoral Commission, the a judiciary and then their internal contest which they are going for national uh, general secretary organizer youth organizer and the chairmanship and we all see the storm that's brewing presently with respect to even the chairmanship position of the party the former president recently granting an interview to the voa when asked about whether he is going to contest said that it will be for his party to determine and then he has not made that decision yet now, the Honorable Agassi Opon Fosu is our guest tonight, and his name featured, I believe, 2016-2020, when a running mate for the NDC was being sought to run with the former president. This is still interested, as his name appeared among the key individuals to a partner, the former president. That's the focus of our conversation tonight on the show. We'll take a very short breather. When we come back, I will introduce you to my guest and then we'll start the conversation. Do stay with us. And welcome back to Fact Sheets live on ETV, live on Nisim 95.9, 100.1 in Bogatanga and Tamale. My guest is with me and we're talking about Ghana. Honorable Akwesi Oponfusu is my guest. Sir, good evening. Good evening. I'm hoping you're doing well. Very well, very well. We thank God. We thank God. Uh, this conversation has been a long sought after conversation, but today it's happening. But let's start with uh, your general view and assessment of uh, the NPP administration. Ghanaians gave them the mandate 2017 into 2020 and then a second mandate. What's your view of the NPP's administration? Um, I'll sum it up with just uh, a few words. Uh, I see uh, a classic case of uh, failure in leadership, misgovernance, and uh, a meltdown of uh, institutions mm -hmm. of this country. W what informs this assessment? It's Governance is about the management of interactions between state and non-state actors. Mm. And uh, with the state is government and uh, state institutions. Mm. Non-state actors, uh, civil society organizations, our traditional authorities, the private sector, and uh, think tanks, and the generality of uh, citizens and some representations of citizens. Mm how the interests of all these actors is managed mm. to achieve the safety and well-being of the citizenry mm. is what governance is about. Mm. And uh, I do not see this happening. Now, let me latch on, to, latch on to the point you made about the safety of the citizenry. In terms of the security of our nation, Regardless of all the information which had been given, I see something, see something, and the threat of a terrorist attack. 
Agane is not safe. The cases of armed robberies we used to have, they've all dwindled. The cases of people's homes being stormed, we seldom hear about them now. Is there no safety in the country? Um, we, we hear of ritual murders on the increase. Mm. Is it another form of, uh, if I will not invade your house, to um, uh, dispossess you of uh, mobile phones and uh, these days, people don't even keep cash at home. Mm. So maybe the, the, there is the realization that that is not uh, beneficial. Mm. So why is the issue of ritual murders on the increase? But can that be attributed to the individual decisions of people who, for their own selfish reasons, may decide to go on that tangent? It's the same motivations that uh, people have that... Uh, take them onto the uh, armed robbery spree. Mm. So it's the same motivation. Okay. Are we safe mm. when we hear of these kidnappings of missing people and all that? Mm. Do you feel safe? Mm. So safety in itself um, is, is broad. Mm. But then you, you have to feel safe if your, your beloved one is out, out there and not back home. Do you feel comfortable? Mm. When you feel comfortable, then that's what safety is about. Let's talk about education, for instance. I know any NPP person who is following the conversation would say, but free SHS is here. So then, what are we talking about? Free SHS is here. Is it not, sir? It is. Yes. And so, in terms of education in this country, haven't we been blessed with something which previously would not have been there? It's just like saying that um, in the absence of nothing bad is good. So in the absence of uh, uh, having apples, a bad apple is good. Mm. So we can say that, yes, uh, free, SHS, free SHS is here, mm. but is it delivering on what we desire? Why is it not delivering on what we desire? If you look at the, for instance, the results that have come from the first batch, the 2017 batch, mm. the very first batch that entered the free SHS system, their grades were good. They were outstanding. The next batch that came, their grades were also good, outstanding. So then if you're measuring the quality of the students we are producing in terms of the examinations we are getting, they are superb. We, we hear of massive, massive cheating. Mm. If, if it's just to produce the grades and uh, people are uh, doing all this to produce that kind of grades that will present it, say, hey, this is what we have. It's uh, a vindication of uh, our policy. Mm. At the end of the day, these are the products going to the university. Mm. And what are the universities saying of the products that are coming with those grades? Mm. It just doesn't end with the grades that the, the, the uh, graduates of the free SHS are holding. What is the process? What has been going on in the schools? Mm. All these are issues that we need to, to uh, be monitoring. In the 2020 elections, your presidential candidates had indicated that the NDC administration would review the free SHS program. Uh, it was misconstru misconstrued to mean a cancellation of the project. I, if you were going to review, what specifically were, were you going to review about the free SHS program? I think it was mischievously twisted mm. to gain political points mm. to mm -hmm. demonize, demonize the, uh, the, the, our candidates, mm. such that people you know, um, kind of uh, put fear instead of uh, having hope in the candidate. Mm. They see that alternative as, uh, as they will put it, scary. Mm. So here's the person who will come and cancel the, the, uh, the free SHS. Mm. So don't vote for him. But what are you but thinking about reviewing about the project, about the entire free SHS program? The, the Director General of the GES has just mentioned some aspects of the review and he's been, he's been booted out. Mm. And now they themselves are talking about review. They themselves are talking about the view. In the beginning, in the beginning in 2016, when 
they started on this tangent, and and uh, Nana Akufuado as a candidate could not even explain to a, a BBC uh, host mm. during an interview where the financing of this free SHS policy was was uh, coming from. Mm. He couldn't even explain. You know, so it was kind of. Um, uh, an electoral, electoral province mm. without the necessary um, structures. Stru structures in place and uh, what will even go into it. Mm. As far as they, 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 they were concerned at the time, let's put that out there, win the votes, mm. come into power, and then we will then sort things out. And it's blown into our faces because students go to school and they start calling home for money to buy food. Mm. Many parents are experiencing that. Mm. The, the children call them through their teachers. They call about textbooks. Some are not able to go now because of textbooks and, and other support that they expect, expect parents to put into the free SHS uh, program. Mm. All these things are happening because there was a rush mm. without thinking through the policy. But you haven't answered my question as to what you would have specifically reviewed if mm. Ghanaians had given you the mandate in 2020. We'll do that in our, in our manifesto. Mm. But it's about nation building. Mm -hmm. And so if we, the, we realize that the structures are crumbling, and we have a solution to them. Should we wait for a party that is now about going to craft a manifesto before we attempt to resolve this the issues? There's an incumbent government that is not prepared to listen to anyone. Mm. When the, the, the key person implementing this policy, being the director general, spoke about aspects of the policy that is to be reviewed, by close of day, he came out to refute what he himself had said mm. and by the next day he was on his way out mm. well, but he's been in office for more than a month after uh, he had made that statement you know granting an interview to one of our sister networks and then mm. later on came to make a u-turn he's been mm. in office for a month but the attribution for his uh, you know uh, removal is expiration of you know his tenure Basically that. So the link between that and the interview, there, I'm trying there, to fuse that together. There are many, many public servants whose tenor expired many, many years ago. Mm. Some even entered the service with ages that do not qualify them to enter. Mm. So in this instance, what, what was the rush about? Mm. So you think that uh, he's being punished for, you know, uh, coming uh, out? I believe so. But if anybody were to be punished, then Kenneth Riata, the finance minister, should be the one whose head should be under the, the gulletin. The president now. says he's doing a good job. Because he has also categorically stated, because he is the financier of this project, mm. he says that if he had his own way, he would want for parents who can afford to pay, so that those who can afford but he's still at the, post. The, these are some of the, the mysteries of uh, Leonardo's administration. Mm. It, it, uh, most of the things don't uh, follow logic. Mm. You try to understand why some of the things happen and you, you can't put your finger on anything. Mm. So we should wait for the NDC's manifesto. Yes. We, how, long we, is that, how long is that going to take? We are working hard on that. Mm. So then, let's say mm. you launch the manifesto in early part of, let's say, 2024. Let's it say you might come earlier. Let's say you launch it in the latter part of 2023. Mm. So we are going to have to deal with this mess until 2023 before these solutions you are preferring. Remember that when we started the conversation, you talked about the holistic nature of governance, which includes the civil society organizations, which includes the churches, and the churches have been speaking about why it's necessary for the free SHS program to be reviewed. So that alternative that the NDC has, if we were to lay it down today, 
it would not be the carriers of this message to the government. It would be with this civil, civil society organizations carrying this to the government. And if he refuses, then it would have been plain enough. And yet the NDC says we should win. We should wait. Or you say we should wait. No. We are working on alternative policy. Mm. Now, are you now working on the alternative policy? We've been at, we've been at a lot. Whilst all this processes have been going on, we've been speaking to some of the issues. Mm. And uh, um, none of the, the issues, not only with free SHS, but with all that has been happening in the country, mm. you realize that there is this kind of, um, of uh, posture towards embracing or, or hearing out from others who have alternative views. Mm. That has been the posture. Mm. So what is the point in confronting uh, a regime that is not prepared to open up for dialogue and uh, hear the other side of what they are doing? which is not benefiting the citizens. Mm. Now, in, in all of this, you know, we are lucky to have a hung parliament, which has an NDC majority, an MEP majority, with one independent candidate tilting the scale. Mm. One would have thought that these concerns you speak about could have been hastened with your members of parliament in parliament, seeing that you have also been a member of parliament before. Why haven't, aren't we seeing that push from the NDC in Parliament for these wrongs in the system to be rectified? You, you, you would recall the issue of the e-levy and how it dragged for so long. Mm. Eventually, um, pillars of society, influential voices were of the view that the NDC must allow this uh, um, policy to be implemented. Mm. Otherwise, the economy was going to collapse. Mm. So these are some of the issues. It gets to a point when you have to take a step back. Mm. Otherwise, you'll be seen to be the one undermining or derailing the, the efforts of government. Mm. Let's talk about the economy. Are you surprised where we are? Uh, yes, I would say so. Um, I didn't expect that it would get to this bad mm. in terms of uh, if you look at the indicators, what it was before that um, <laughs> President Mahama was uh, tagged as incompetent. Mm and uh, the situation now. Mm. We can say whatever we, we, we want to say about external conditions, mm. but we knew. And uh, the IMF country director at the point said, no, this mess started before COVID and the other external situations. Mm. We have a situation where all along the, the, the kind of borrowing that we've never experienced before was happening in this country and government was not prepared to listen. Mm. These are issues that were raised consistently by the NDC, by, by NDC's uh, uh, caucus in parliament and all that. But government w went ahead. But then uh, it has taken such a dive, which surprises everybody, even themselves. Mm. They themselves are surprised at where they brought this country. We are at the verge. We are at the verge, and uh, they are still, they are still <laughs> I don't know where they get that confidence from, mm. but they still believe that they are on top of things, which mm. isn't the case. In some jurisdictions, mm. most people would have just stepped out. Mm. But 
as, as uh, I, 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 I said, uh, you, you just amazed at where the confidence comes from. For the president to say that the, 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 the finance minister is doing a good job and he has to stay in office. But the argument about the impact of COVID-19 on our economy, the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war on our economy, is it not real that indeed COVID-19 threw us off gear in terms of our projections and our plans? Is it not a reality? There is an Akan, Akan proverb that says, uh, a for you and says, it's better. Okay. Previously, when they had this kind of uh, um, bathrooms that were not roofed, yeah. you know, in the, in the villages, mm -hmm. the bathrooms were detached yeah. and they were not roofed. Mm. And uh, no one had gone to the bathroom that morning, but the place is wet. Mm. And uh, somebody is blaming the situation uh, uh, of, the, of the floor being wet to the rains. Mm. That came later. Yeah. So the proverb, say, the proverb is that the, the floor of the, of the bathroom was wet before the rains. Mm. So this mess, we were in this mess before COVID and the Ukraine-Russia uh, war. We were in this mess. The indicators showed. And it was going downhill. But interestingly, uh, they, they, they have to hold on to these external factors as a reason. But we all know that this situation was bad before it got worse mm. with the external factors. Now, let's stay within 2019 and 2020 belts. Within 2019, we were still within the single-digit single inflation margin. Our macroeconomic indicators were good. Our projections were good. And at the time, the IMF had done its Article 4 review of our nation. And their remarks were speaking highly of the prospects of the Ghanaian economy until 2020 when COVID-19 struck. And then we started experiencing these shocks and things started falling into disarray. So your argument about a guy for your and sana in Shubeto, does it necessarily still hold, seeing that the macroeconomic indicators were good in 2019? 2019? Yes. I what? can quickly go to the IMF website and get mm. you the IMF's report, the mm. Article 4 report, 2019, mm. as to what the outlook of the Ghanaian economy was, comparatively to that of 2020 and 2021. So you realize that that of 2020, 2021 are terrible. We'll look at 2016 before we go to 2019. Okay. So let, let's... So we should look at how things... Were before were they took before over. And then in 2019, when the IMF uh, uh, did that... Outcome. Well, 2016, before we entered into 2017, the IMF had predicted that the Ghanaian economy was going to grow. Mm. Uh, you agree with me at the time, there were new oil fields uh, that were going to be added into our stream. And, uh, you know, we were getting the support from the IMF, and so it was giving some sort of cover in terms of trust and confidence in the Ghanaian economy to investors outside. Because there was a hope that with the IMF in the equation, the government was not going to overspend, and so people's investments were safe. So that was the outlook 2016, 2017, 2018, even into 2019. So I come back to my question as to the reality of the impact of COVID-19 mm. on the Ghanaian economy. It is real, is it not? Yes, it is. So why do we then want to run away from that impact necessarily? That impact on, on it was uh, a global situation. Mm. Nobody's disputing that. Mm. But we were going downhill before with the borrowing. Mm most of the things hitting us in the face is the borrowing for consumption. Mm. If you borrow and you invest and there are returns, it's, you then have a fallback. But if you have borrowed for consumption mm. and you have to service that loans and any external shocks set in, 
that's when you don't have any 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 thing to fall on. Mm. So that's precisely where we are. And we, we kept cautioning about this excessive borrowing. But nobody was prepared to listen. I remember some of the arguments advanced by uh, communicators within the NPP when it comes to this issue about borrowing and debt servicing. Mm. They said that you had signed power agreements uh, which were putting a burden on the Ghanaian economy and so these had to be serviced. They spoke about your indebtedness to contractors in the country. They spoke about energy sector and debts that are there. They spoke about projects that are to be done and they spoke about the free SHS which are to be paid for. And so these are things that they say are legacy issues which are to be dealt with. Correct. So if, if, if the president goes to Kumasi to commission the Kumasi airport, Terminal 3 uh, has never been commissioned. Yeah. UGMC was recently commissioned. Mm. These are legacy projects, as you said. Mm. It's, it's, if you are happy to commission that, then you should complete the payment. Mm. And not complain about that. Mm. So, we can, we can point to investments, projects. What are projects that they are pointing to in terms of the unprecedented borrowing? They would tell you mm. that, uh, for instance, the in Sawum Suhum Apedia Road, they are fixing it, or they fixed it. They would tell you that uh, the Pokwasi interchange, they will tell you that they have done that. They will tell you that, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, Akratima motorway stretch, they will tell you that they are doing that. They will tell you that they have done housing projects as well. They will tell you that uh, one, one district, one factory, <laughs> they, they would mention all of these things to you. They would even mention to you the free SHS program. It doesn't suffice for you. One district, one factory. I've not seen any factory that have been built by the government. But they would I also tell you that it's a public-private partnership project. And wh where is government's investment in that? These are private, private entities that the president or high government official will visit, and then they will just uh, put the signposts, one district, one factory. What is government's equity in all these projects? What's government's role? When we are talking about local economic development, it is a policy. Mm. We, we, we had that policy. We had finished with that policy before we left office. Mm. Where central government, district assemblies, traditional authorities, and the private sector come together to design uh, uh, an economic activity within the jurisdiction. Mm. So if it is a, a, the agricultural value chain for an area, the government facilitates. Government's role will be to provide the infrastructure in that area. Mm. The, the assemblies will do the regulation and the permitting of lands and all that. The chiefs who play their role in land acquisition. Mm. And then the private sector invests in projects that will generate the local economy. Mm. That's the idea of government's role in district economic development. But you don't go into districts where private set, a private entity has a factory or a project, and then you go and put a sign post, one district, one factory. I don't, I'm yet to know of any of these ones that they are targeting as uh, gov where government has an equity or has uh, played a role in its establishment. 
Interesting. We will take a short breather. When we come back, there are a few other things we'll touch on before we switch to NDC matters. One has to do with the fight against Galamsey and where we are. Have we lost that battle? Then the contest, the keen contest, especially when it comes to the chairmanship position of the NDC. Are NDC folks themselves concerned about the utterances by aspirants for these positions? We'll be right back. And you're welcome back to Fact Sheets live on ETV, live on Nisi 95.9 and 100.1. I'm speaking to the Honorable Akosio Pomfosu, and we're talking about uh, state affairs. Now, let's come to a ministry where you've been before, local governance in the country, and link it to the fight against Galamse. Are you happy about how this fight so far has traveled? I would say that almost every, every um, activity that takes the country back has grown exponentially under this government. Mm. Corruption, um, abuse of office, name it, everything. It exists. But at times we say, didn't it happen under NDC? What I say is that it's in we look at the scope and scale. Mm. How exponentially these things have grown. Galamse existed. Mm. NDC also did some attempts to, to deal with it. But what we're experiencing now is the scope and scale and its ramifications. Mm. And uh, I just sum it up as uh, the reason why it has taken that turn with, with that uh, um, comment by the minister who was uh, responsible for fighting this mm. uh, 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 menace, as uh, saying that party Mihinska. The, 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 Why it has, it has grown that big mm. is because the NPP in government and its affiliates are behind this exercise. We, we, we get to hear these all of the time. NPP are behind this. Politicians are behind it. But nobody is naming anybody. The, the Minister for Local Government, in the first term, of Nanado's government during the orientation course for an orientation course for MMDCs mm. made a comment. I, I even did a statement on it that the national security is aware that some MMDCs are behind this Galamse operations in their districts mm. and they have a list. I, they have a list of all those who were involved. I was thinking that this is not just to warn, but to take drastic action. Because an MMDC is the chair of DICEC. Mm. So if they themselves are involved, how do you then deal with it? But subsequent events, what happened at the Flagstaff House with Charles Bissou, the own minister's statement in connection with uh, some, some excavators and uh, a conversation that was recorded, mm. in which he said it, it had to do with Galamse and operations and some monies. Mm. And he said, Party Nihiska. What it means is that this Galamse operations is being supported by the government and the institutions that are to fight it, that government control that are to fight it, to raise funds for the NPP party. Do you think this fight is genuine by the government? No, I don't believe so. I don't think so. You think the president is really not worried with all the speeches we hear, the body language and the concern with the uh, town hall meetings we have had, the dialogues we have had? You think the president is not 
genuine about this? What I've noticed about the president is that what he says and what he, he does are at variance. Mm. What he says and what he does, or what he says and what happens under his administration are at variance. Mm. Let's put the naming and shaming aside for a second. From what you said, you have dealt with DCs before, uh, MCs before, you know, people, chiefs and all, local authorities and all. What really is the problem with this whole mining issue? Uh, normally what happens is that pros uh, prospectors, gold prospectors will go for a license to prospect mm. and that will involve digging some pits and taking samples mm. to test and when they've done all that then they go for the mining license mm. but now most of these people holding Prospecting licenses are in the in the field mining. They only need that as a cover, and that also brings us as a country to the issue of public sector appointments on merit and on patronage. Mm. When 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 the public sector becomes partisan and the, 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 the mindset is that you are there to raise funds for the party. All these things will happen. Mm. All these things will happen. You, we have a situation when the public, the public service now with a kind of appointment is there to provide political services. Mm. to the incumbent. Mm. And that will also include raising funds within the public services and, uh, and uh, the, the resources that are there and the opportunities that are there to support an incumbent government. This is one area that I'm looking forward to it mm. with the, 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 the prospects high prospects of NDC coming to power in 2024 mm. to look at reforming the public service to make it professional. A professional body that abides by its tenets of uh, neutrality and ethical, ethical conduct. It's interesting you bring this issue in because the former president, John Dramani Mahama, made a similar comment mm. on the review of the constitution. I'm sure it will encompass all these things you are right. talking about. But some of them would say that there's been a constitutional review under the late former president, John Dramani, uh, uh, John Evans at Amels. A government white paper was issued on that. And it was during the tenure of the NDC that this happened. And yet, the opportunity for reform of our constitution was not grabbed. So how then do we believe you? Yeah, you know, with public policy making, it goes through a process. There are times when the exigencies of the time will push certain policies to the back burner. Mm. There are so many policies before a government to be implemented. Mm. And as the, the, depending on the context at the time, Certain policies will come at the front burner mm. and will push others to the back burner. Mm. So um, as we, we are in opposition now and have had the, uh, the, the opportunity to look at some of these policies that we couldn't push forward, it gives us the motivation to deal quickly with such policies when we are next in government. Let's do a hypothetical conversation. As you mean, NDC comes to power today. Mm. And what would be the first three things that your name popped up as running mate before 
2016-2020 your name popped up. What would be the first three things you'd want your government, if it won't part today, to tackle? You see, there, 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 there's so much mistrust of politicians now, mm. whether in this year and PP. Mm. The public needs to be given that confidence mm. that um, we, we hold on to our value systems mm. and beliefs as a people that um, politicians are there in the public space to serve mm. and not for their own well-being. So some of the things that I believe um, our president, we don't know yet, mm. may want to deal with is to restore confidence in the in public service but that perception is it true that politicians are in not for the national interest but for their pockets is I think, it true i think we all see and uh, with all that happened uh that has the percep that perception is moving close to reality mm. it's not reality yet well you, uh, you said perception mm. i'm even pushing it further mm. that it is moving close to reality. That because we, that's, we see, that's what it we is. We see politicians who, prior to coming into power, virtually struggling, and then they become ministers, appointees, and they are driving the four by fours. And suddenly, houses, homes are springing up, and they are owning them. Some people are fronting for them, and they are doing so well. They come into opposition, back to ground zero. It is a, a reflection of the socio-cultural construct mm. of we as a people. Okay. If you don't do that, your own family and friends might see you, they, 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 they'll, they'll see you as a, as a failure. Mm. The expectations of Ghanaians themselves is for politicians to be corrupt. That's the expectation. Mm. They expect you to be corrupt. Mm. They expect to benefit from you. Mm. It starts from the, even the internal politics, transactions, mm. right from the, 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 the grassroots level through to the constituencies, to the regions, to national elections. People are expecting some kind of inducement. Then when, even in opposition, if you are an MP, even in opposition, that, is, that expectation is still hanging around your, your, your neck. Mm. So it is a kind of mindset of we Ghanaians ourselves that encourages this kind of uh, 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 behavior that we see in not only politicians, but those in the public space. There are, pub there are civil servants and uh, other technocrats who are even maybe doing worse than the politicians. That's the expectations of, of, of family members and friends and, and society. Mm. So we, as the people, must deal with the value systems that we are going into the public space to serve. It's, it's self-sacrifice, not self-serving. Mm. So this one one aspect that we need to engage Ghanaians on through the NCCE and all those organizations. Interesting. Now, let's zoom in on the NDC. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> the elections, uh, people have picked up forms, nominations and all of that. The constituency elections, you know, people are campaigning and all. But I want us to focus on the national. Mm. Chairman of Osambofu is in the news. Mm. General Secretary Johnson and Sidney Katia is also in the news. He's granted some interviews and some of the things he has said, some people find them unsavory against the chairman of the party. Let me pick your thoughts on that. How are you putting together these elections to ensure that by the time you are done, your front is not divided? Well, um, politics and the uh contests uh, um, in 
in uh, well, not only in politics, <laughs> all uh, contests raise this kind of uh, uh, heat. Mm. People will say things um, in the in the heat of the moment. Mm. But at the end of the day, what I am looking for is that we put up a team that, that the electorate will have confidence in. Mm. Once that is done, whatever someone said <laughs> becomes uh, uh, pales into, into the background. It is the team and the, the vision that they will present to Ghanaians that will make the difference. So you're not concerned about experienced stalwarts in your party, like the general secretary and his utterances in interviews that he has granted calling the chairman of your party, because he is still the substantive chairman of your mm. party, telling Ghanaians and the electorate that he's not brave. He took decisions with that consultation. These are internal party matters, which, until he said them, were not in the public domain. It, he's taken absolute decisions, even to concede at Ayawaso and several other things. These are things that you should be concerned about as party members it, and stalwarts. As I, as I said, politics uh, has its own just like any in a uh, um, competitive position mm. may, may, uh, it might be in the traditional when they are even family members family members vying for a vacant too mm. all sorts of things happen i i watched a, a clip of uh, the primaries in the, in uh, nigeria mm. and uh, the apc candidate now tinubu um, went on a, a, a kind of tangent against a certain president mm. that he, he had been a, a, a three time failure till he made him the candidate. Mm. These are real serious shots. Yeah. We had Trump even uh, calling people names, uh, uh, attacking Hillary Clinton, and saying she should be jailed and all that. These things happen. Mm. It's so you're not concerned as a party about I mean, these are just the early days. It's, it just started. You're not concerned about it? No, they, they, they will pass. They will pass? They will pass. Mm. At, the, at the end of the day, we need to have a solid team. Like uh, um, His Excellency Baobia said, this is a solid team when he announced his economy <laughs> <laughs> We, we just need to have a solid team that mm. will, will give Ghanaians hope mm. that we are ready and capable of turning things around for the country. A solid team, those who are putting themselves up, and I'm talking about the chairmanship position, mm. yeah. have been at the helm before. And so... Mr. Johnson has been a general secretary for a while. Chairman of Fusambafu was there when he went for the 2020 elections. Shouldn't there be a new wind blowing? After all, we have seen what these individuals are capable of. The NDC went into the elections. The mantra out there within sending circles is they couldn't even produce any uh, pink sheets or whatever. Should the NDC not be thinking about a new crop of leadership for your party going into the next elections? No, we have a free um, democratic organization. And um, so far, I've not heard of anyone being prevented. So why are the others also not showing up to mm. say, look, we can do a better job than you guys who are at each other's streets? Mm. Nobody has said that. So we, 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 go, we go on with, with uh, what we have. Mm. Perhaps uh, people believe they, they are in, 
the party is in capable hands with them. Mm. I, I, I don't know what's in people's minds, but mm. nobody has so far come out to strongly challenge those that we know who are vying and uh, uh, firing missiles at each other. Mm. But what, what, what is in your mind? You say people, but yes. I'm saying that what is in your mind about these individuals who are putting themselves up for the elections, seeing what we have seen them do before, and the possibility of Ghanaians looking at them to assess them and to buy their message going into the 2024 elections. These are experienced hands. They all have their strengths mm. and capabilities. Yeah. We need all of them. We need, we need all of them. Mm. At the end of the day, only one will emerge. How we, we manage to retain the strength and capabilities of the others who will not be successful is, uh, tells about the character of our party, mm. how we are able to manage, manage uh, the fallouts, mm. tells the character of our party and how prepared and ready and hungry we are for power. And I'm sure we'll, we'll live up to the task. There are those who hold the view that the NEC is just riding with the wind. And that, but for the mess that the administration is causing by itself, the NDC would not have been providing any credible alternative solutions for which Ghanaians could look at and say, nah, now is the time for us to look at the NDC. All the NDC is doing is they folded their arms and saying, ah, look at free messages. Now they are, they are doing double track system. Look at the Ghanaian economy. They're going back to the IMF. Look at the agricultural sector. Now Russia, Ukraine war. So the uh, fertilizers are not coming into the country. And so we are suffering. Look at cocoa. Galamse is destroying it. It is just the things that are happening that is giving the NDC an opportunity. But as today working for this opportunity, you are not doing or showing that. Would they be wrong to say that? Uh, well, they are. <laughs> they are wrong. Mm. So far, we, we have been, from the various press conferences, uh, minority in power on the economy, Adungu, uh, Atuforsin, and all the, the, the aspects in those areas. Energy, uh, you talk of um, Kwabna Donko and, uh, and uh, Jinapo. They, they, they come out with alternatives. Mm. But you see, the... the Landscape has become drowned in a lot of noise, mm. a lot of noise, and a lot of scandals. Okay. Before you address one to even sit down and uh, engage, engage the media and citizens on the, the issues that you raise, another, another one comes up. Mm. It's as if it's in, you might wonder, is it intentional that let's have so many scandals that people lost sight mm -hmm. of dealing with it? You know, during NDC, when the, when the MPP got hold of uh, the Wyoming case, yeah. it dragged on for years because there was nothing more to bring up. Mm. But here we are, every day, before the day ends, something comes up. Mm. Before you start in the morning, by evening, and that issue weightier than what you started in the morning also comes up. Mm. So we, 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 we are dealing with all this. That's why you can't put your hand on an issue that the NDC has dealt with and uh, it has sunk in the minds of Ghanaians. It's too many. Mm. Too many of scandals and corruption and uh, conflict of interest, involvement in Galamse, all kinds of things. Mm. Now, there is also the issue of the thoughts and the perception that the NDC seems to be antagonizing virtually all the institutions that if they win power, they'll be working with. NDC says the judiciary, ah, we don't trust them. NDC says the electoral commission, 
Ah, we don't trust them. We won't go for IPAC meeting. Ghana police is in the picture. Who are you going to govern with? That's if what, you come to power. What I said about meltdown of institutions. Hmm. When institutions of state become so, so partisan, then the issue of bias has to be addressed. The NDC, NDC as a party and individuals raise the issue of the judiciary. But the National Security Advisor at a point drew attention to it. That this undermines national security. Mm. This kind of judgments that are coming out where all the, 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 the members on, on, on the bench will vote unanimously on an issue. So he raised that issue as well. And mm. that's what the NDC has been saying all along. Mm. Uh, uh, President Mahama said it and all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they attack the National Security uh, uh, minister. Coordinator, yeah, minister? You know. So uh, when the NDC says it, then people take it differently. But all these things are happening and the, 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 the pillars of society who are the, the, the voices of reason, they see. If they are talking, it would have made more impact than the NDC saying it. Mm. But they are not talking. And that is dangerous for our democracy. Because you are, you are, you, you are seen to be attacking the religious institutions as well. NDC is on the back of the religious institutions. NDC is on the back of some of the civil society organizations. So then, it's one against all. So who then do you get to trumpet your issues for you so it sounds neutral a bit for people to... The, 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 the question is, is, is the NDC just um, creating a storm in a teacup? It, 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 is it true? Is it a fact? The position some of these institutions have taken. Mm. Is, it, is this just uh, our imagination? Or it's something that is uh, a reality, something that is happening? Mm. That's what we should ask ourselves. When we raise the issues, are they facts? If we raise issues of conflict of interest against the, the, the Minister of Finance, that you go on, a, on, on a, a borrowing spree and your own company is in the center of it as transaction advisor and you are taking commissions, commissions mm. for, for that. In some jurisdictions, somebody will go to jail for this. Mm. But here it is okay. These are issues we raise. These are issues that affect the economy, that affect every other person in society. If this institutions are saying that non-state actors led by traditional leaders, led by uh, uh, um, religious leaders, mm -hmm. led by the business leaders, if they are raising these issues, then the NDC will not be seen to be the, the, the only, only group in the country always picking on issues. But at times, when you raise the issues, the counter argument comes from some of these institutions that the NDC is confronting. Mm. Then you, 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 you give us the impression that you have taken sides. You are supposed to be neutral and say it as it is, whether it's NDC in power or ND, uh, MPP in power. Mm. That's how democracies thrive. But when the pillars, these are the pillars of society that strengthens our democracy to ensure that the foundation of democracy, of, of good governance, accountability is key, uh, uh, credibility is key, integrity is key. Mm. These institutions need to ensure that this foundation is not touched. But if government will not be accountable and the NDC raises the issues and the, the, the counter 
arguments or attacks come from some of these institutions, we, we are bound to react, mm. to let them know that you don't take sides. That, that has been the trend. In ending, two, two final questions. Does the NDC trust the Electoral Commission? If they do what is right. But do you trust them? So far, we, 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 they've not gained our trust with all that has gone on. Mm. Final one has to do with you. Your name popped up as running mate for President John Romani Mahama a couple of times. They were showcased, pictures out there, and virtually all of them you have surfaced. Do you have that interest <laughs> of being the vice president of this country if the NDC should come to power? Do you have that interest? I have an interest to serve wherever I'll be called to serve. Mm. Um, I started my, my public, public service career in Obuasi as district secretary. Mm. I just said my name on air. Mm. And then went to Obuasi as district secretary in 82. Three years later, again, I had my name on air that I've been sent to Tepa. I just packed a bag of baggage and moved to Tepa, mm. where I stayed for 15 years. Wow. Yes, I was, uh, I was there for 15 years. So one day I was announced, I was out of the country, I was announced as, uh, that was in uh, early 2000, uh, nominated for Deputy Minister for Local Government before mm. uh, we left office. So that has been... The progression. Yes. Um, Anywhere I'm, I'm called to serve, uh, I'll, I'll willingly do that. But mm. I don't um, set out to say that I want to serve in this capacity. Even for, for, for a member of parliament, it took a real uh, um, push for me to go to that constituency because during visits to the constituency by Professor Mills, they, they told him on the number of occasions he went there that if I come to contest, they vote for NDC. That's mm. how come I got in there. And even then it was a real uh, uh, tug of war uh, going to contest for the seat. So. Uh, that's what it is. I, I personally, I like to be in the background. Mm. 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 People ask, "You've been in politics for all this while? We don't know you." Yeah. And I said, "Yes." Yeah. People know is the name, name recognition, but yeah. the person they, they, they don't know. know. I, I like to stay in the background and uh, work. Work. Honourable, we're grateful that uh, you gave us the opportunity to be in your house uh, this evening for this conversation. We are hoping that going forward, as the uh, elections draw close, we'll have another session with you yes. to have such meaningful conversations. We are grateful you made time for Thank us tonight. Much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a wonderful uh, discussion. Mm. Hope to see you again. Hope to see you again, too. And that will be it for tonight on Fact Sheet Live on ATV on Nisi 95.9 and 100.1. We wish you.